the world you see with your senses is just a fraction of what is really going on. There is a hidden reality that can help you understand the world better and make better decisions as a result. In this video, I will remove the veil from the network mental models. We'll look at the underlying patterns that they have and what you can do with those patterns to improve your life. Which pill will you take? My name is Greg Angelbert. I've had about a 20 year corporate career where I went from being a trainee to eventually a vice president, a managing director of a business. And from managing just one person, myself, to about a thousand people eventually. Today, I'm a master coach helping people, teams, and organizations to know themselves, to design their future selves, and to become their future selves. In essence, any network is a system. System thinking is a process of understanding how different things influence each other within a whole. And system thinking has some basic key concepts. First, it has a holistic perspective. It's all about seeing the whole instead of just seeing the different small parts. Then there is interconnectedness with recognizing how the elements interact with each other within a system. There are feedback loops which are reinforcing or stabilizing the system. And then there is leverage. Within a system, there are always some points which can exert a bigger influence on the rest of the system than other parts. When you think about relationship, then system thinking helps you to understand what is the dynamic that there is within a system of relationship for you between the different element members and what is best for you. By seeing those links, you can help nurture healthy social relationships. For your personal development, if you can identify your routines, your habits, how they interact with each other, then you can influence the best way to live your life. For your finances, you can see financial decisions as a way to use your money as a mean, not an end, and going towards your life goals. A clear example is your health. If you just focus on your diet or the way you exercise, that won't be enough. Diet, exercise, sleep, stress level, and your own nature, they all impact and influence each other for contributing to your health. At work, you can see a team as an interconnected system. You can also use it for project management to see how different parts of your projects are interacting with each other. So what are practical ways that you can use system thinking? The first step is to visualize the system that you're considering. As long as there is an input and an output, there is most likely a system with a process in there. So first, list and connect all the different components of the system. Identify the patterns of the different elements and how it looks like as a big picture. Also identify where are the feedback loops. Remember to think about dynamics and not statics. The system might well be constantly changing at a slow or a fast pace. If you want to know more about system thinking, then check out in the description the book from Daniela H. Meadows, which is called Thinking in Systems. That's pretty much the Bible for system thinking. Let's start with a simple network analysis tool called the connection circles. It's a visual representation used to map relationships between various entities in a system. They consist of nodes representing entities and lines which are connecting them. The nodes represent people, tasks, ideas, and the relationships are lines or arrows which are demonstrating what is the connection between the nodes. And the network is the overall interconnected nodes coming together with those lines. You can use this to do a social network analysis. It's to look at how your friends, your families, all the people that you know are interconnected and how they influence each other. Or you can work on conflict resolution. You can look at the underlying tensions, the underlying problems in the connections between people. And for work, you can do stakeholder mapping. That's very powerful. It helps you identify the relationship that there is between different people, different departments, organization within a project or an organization. You can also map the main elements of what contributes to your business with the example here of McDonald's and French fries. So how can you use a connection circles model? Define what you want to analyze first, what puzzles you. Then list all the nodes and the connections that you can think of. Then you create a visual map of all those connections. You might want to be using a mind mapping software, for example, to help you manipulate the data and move things around. Look for patterns, key influencers, bottlenecks, etc. That will give you some insights. And now what's important is that you take decisions based on those insights. The point is to act. You like this video so far? Then you know what to do. Subscribe to the channel and put the notifications on if you want to receive content like this every week. And for more on network mental models, check out the description for more resources about the concept. A very important aspect of networks to understand is Metcalfe's law. 
It states that the value of a network is proportional to the square of the number of connected users in the system. Confused? It just means that as more people or devices are part of a network, then the value of the network is growing exponentially. You can see what it looks like on the screen with a step-by-step -step increase of participants. From a technology perspective, then we have early network effects like the phone system. Then we've had more vibrantly today the internet and also social media. From a personal perspective, you can think about how your professional or your personal network can enhance your life. And if you're running a company, a department, uh, or you're in a company working there, then you can see that some software tools will be more useful than others if there are software tools which are connected different parts of the organization together. So what can you do with Metcalf's Law? Look for opportunities to grow your network. And here you should be focusing on quality of the relationship. Find people who are well connected to others so that they really expand your network. And also focus on how connection can provide mutual value. It needs to work both ways. And don't forget your existing connection. Make sure that you nurture them, you take care of them, and you leverage them. Analyze your network span and depth according to what you want to achieve. What is working? What is not working? And then again, make decisions based on that. A scale-free network is a network whose degree distribution, the number of connections a node has, follows a power law, meaning that a few nodes called hubs, have the majority of connections while the others have few. Confused? The picture on the screen should help you understand this better, so look at the one on the right side. You see hubs, which are nodes having more connections than others. And a scale-free network is robust as long as you do not cut the hubs. And when this type of network grows, then the new nodes tend to attach to existing hubs. You can see that with airline networks in the world, they work with a hub and spoke system. And in real life, your social network will look like a scale-free network, which means that there will be some people who will be actual super connector, usually extroverted people. In project management, this can be very useful to identify the roles or tasks which are connecting to the most parts of the project. Or if you're an influencer or you want to influence people, then understanding hubs to spread yourself is key to a faster leverage. Like if somebody famous is endorsing your YouTube channel. If you're famous and watching this, feel free. So what can you do with scale-free networks? Well, the first thing is to pick a network that is important to you. Identify the key nodes or individuals in the network. Look at how you can leverage the hubs. And if you're responsible for a system like that with hubs, then make sure that you understand what are the weak points for each of your hubs so you can protect them. A feedback loop is a process where the output of a system is fed back into the system as input. They are everywhere. A positive feedback loop amplifies change, which can lead to a very fast or exponential growth or decline. A negative feedback loop counteracts changes. It's about bringing more stability in the system. You see an illustration on the screen with climate aspects. Cooling can create ice, which increases albedo, which is light being reflected, which means less heat absorption. The positive feedback we are experiencing is the one on the right about the warming. For negative feedback, you can see that warming can increase bad weather, which might make for weaker greenhouse and cooling, or vice versa. Your health very much depends on a lot of feedback loops that there is in your body and between different elements like what you eat, the way you sleep, as a quantity of what you eat, your stress level, etc. And if you understand those feedback loops and the way they work with your nature, then you will be able to tailor the habits to what makes life good for you. For organizations, it's pretty important to understand how you can create positive feedback and for what. It can be aimed at fast growth for sales, revenues, or it can be about fast reduction if you think that your costs are way too high. But you also need to think about the negative feedback loops that you need to have in the company, like quality control, for instance, or if you need safety. So what can you do with feedback loops? As usual, look for a system, a network that you want to improve. Or it can be just to understand it better. Then find the feedback loops in the system and determine whether they are positive or negative. And then find mechanisms that will help you reinforce the loops that you want to work upon. It can be a reward for a positive feedback loop, or you can also find some mechanism to make sure that you hinder some of the loops, that you reduce their intensity. Then it's a question of monitoring all the loops and see the impact it has when you change some parts of the system in the loops. When you see networks around you, you start to see life in a very different way. You truly see the matrix. An experiment called the small world phenomenon 
tracked letters that would be sent by one person to a complete stranger who would live far away in the US. And the result was that the letter could reach the complete stranger with an average of about six connections. That means that everybody in the world, in some way, might be just six connections away from where you are. It's a small world indeed. I will leave you with a quote from Johann Wolfgang von Goethe. In nature, we never see anything isolated, but everything in connection with something else which is before it, beside it, under it, and over it. You're not sure about how to set goals with the networks that you can see all around you? Then check out this video, which is talking about powerful goal-setting mental models.